And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. <clears throat> See what I did with my hair there? That was beautiful. It, uh, it, it classic. Thank you. It's time, buddy! It is time. Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time. Once again, for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to casually saunter our way into the final act of the show, and it is said final act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new extra-strength, high-fiber, low-fat, turbocharged, all-wheel-drive, hand-picked, hand-crafted, and hand-me-down movie of the week! And this week, the master of action. Michael Mann is at it again with an intricate, intricately, intricate, in, intricate, intricate, in, thank you, with an intricately crafted crime drama that reinvents the genre with compelling performances and a tight script that barrels full force towards the viewer with the masterful precision of a Swiss timepiece. Yes! Whoa. It's time for us to watch the beautifully crafted masterpiece of cinema, the 2007 Oscar-nominated, award-winning crime drama, Born into Mafia! Yes. All of those platitudes came from reviews of the film Heat, <laughs> Fucking Heat. <coughs> the 90s film Heat. Uh, but this movie, Born into Mafia, this is not Heat. Uh, this is an indie piece of shit from 2007 by some guy named Vitaly Versace. No relation. At all. Because if an actual... Or he would have had money for the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if an actual Versace made this movie, it would have looked a lot more like uh, You, Me, Madness, or whatever the fuck that movie was. Uh, me, You, Madness? You, Me, Madness? One of those. You think? One of those, yeah. Uh, this movie is so... I, I, I just want bad. to say... Yes, and First say what you're off, saying. I'm gonna get a drink. That thanks to the help of Barb and Star, I was able to pull back my sheer hatred for this movie and found a place to forgive. Nice. Nice. Because, like, at the end of the day, this is a bunch of kids who got together, pooled their money, and made a movie, and it sucks. Like it's fun, gonna, you know. Fun fact: the fun fact: the end credits of this movie are like three and a half hours long. Oh God, we we will get to that. Chris, yeah. like I timed it. <laughs> I think it's roughly ten minutes, which is phenomenal because uh, it's just like ten dudes making this movie. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, from that regard, okay, well, you know, like, I have to encourage, I have to encourage their effort. Yeah, it's but like... it was horribly it, amateurish, even for a guerrilla movie. Yeah, like, I love movies like these because you see this movie, you see Vitaly Versace's Born into Mafia, and you go, like, you see Do. You see Dune and go, wow, this is epic. Epic in scope. Epic in grandeur. Wow. This, this, this movie, it, it took a team of a thousand people to make this movie. But then you see Born into Mafia and you go, I could make this. Like, yeah. I, I, so I, you, you have to respect a movie like this, like Born into Mafia, because you see it and you go, shit, what's stopping me from making a movie? Because, like, 
it, I, I honestly believe that this movie and all the other movies that these people made are like some sort of a scam because one thing that I have learned now that I have Amazon Prime is they'll buy anything. Yeah. They'll buy anything. And so they make this movie for what a thousand dollars and they and you can now buy it on Amazon. You can now rent it on Amazon Prime. You know? Yeah. So like so you see this movie and you go, shit, what's stopping me from making a movie? If this film sucks, but they made it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's difficult to explain, but I love movies like this. You well, again, like I go, say, I, yeah, like I, can make I a applaud movie. the effort. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry you failed. I hope you learned a lot, and your next movie is better. You know? Yeah, there are two like, movies like that's, in... You know, so, like, again, a place of forgiveness. But this what movie's I... fucking horrible. Yeah, there's two scenes in the beginning of the film where they're in a restaurant. In Russia, I didn't know they had olive gardens in Russia. Uh, and I love the scenes in the restaurant because it's obvious that they're, they're just putting in the background the sounds of a restaurant, of people talking, of people eating, of silverware lightly scraping upon a plate. But also, the restaurant is obviously closed and you're the only fucking people there. <clears throat> yeah. So it makes the whole scene really creepy. Like the hero's dad is shot dead. You hear one person scream, and then you hear the sound of an entire restaurant just continuing to eat. Yeah. But no one is there. Oh, I love this movie so much. <laughs> and come on, look, look. You, if you're guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. You can get an exterior, like you could just, you, you're in a car, you have the window rolled down, your friend pulls up to the fanciest restaurant in fucking town. Yeah. You film some footage, you lean out the window, you film some footage until you start getting nervous and then you tell them to drive away. It doesn't have to be an exterior of a fucking olive garden. And they show the the Olive <coughs> Garden sign. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like they meet at a. Well, they showed they showed like all of the sign except for where it literally said Olive Garden. Yeah, yeah, but you can tell that it's an Olive Garden. You can tell that this whole thing is happening in an Olive Garden. The entire film is just insane. They meet at a library in what is supposed to be Russia, but this Russian library has all of these English language posters all over it. You know? And, uh... Uh... The, oh, the part that I loved is that, oh, you're at an American looking... You're at an American library in Russia. Gee, I didn't know that Russia... Had copies of Sedona Magazine. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that one of the biggest publications in Russia is a magazine about Sedona, Arizona. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Well, You're not also, even well, I was trying. Like, yeah, I was also like, why, why did you just get a foreign girlfriend? Not that there's anything wrong with a foreign girlfriend, but it seems like you're trying to tell a bit of a fish out of water story with he's from Russia and he's in LA. You would want kind of a blonde, bouncy, all American yeah. girl to to like show him the ways of the American culture. You know? Like yeah. going out for ice cream and you know, taking a walk on the beach or whatever like that. And then I get to the end credits and I was like, oh, okay, I know why she's foreign. She's got money in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I felt the same way with one of the worst actors, the bald guy. Yeah. His, 
His character gets shot in the head, in the brain, right here. He gets shot point blank in the head and he's dead. But apparently, maybe he has maybe he has Wolverine's healing power because he's in the end of the movie. <laughs> fucking died and he came back to life to be at the end of the film he is the absolute worst actor i i i did a, a sizzle reel in, on twitter of the scene in the olive garden where the the mafia boss gets shot and then the scene where he shows up to the friends who are playing basketball yeah one of the most masterful acting sequences of all time that bald guy and the two friends. Oh, I love this movie so much. What the fuck are up with the word bubbles? The word bubbles! Okay. We, we oh, hashed around that a lot. And the best that we can come to is the Russian mob is all made out of telepaths. Or maybe because there just... was a scene where, and this is the one that was the most telling. There was a scene where they were playing cards, and they were talking to each other all in thought bubbles. Yeah. Yes. And while they were playing cards, none of their lips were moving. Then yes, I I totally didn't think about that. Because, like, at first I thought, was that supposed to mean that they were speaking Russian? You know? Maybe. But but in this scene, none of their lips were moving, so they had to have been telepaths. That's a really good point. I they didn't think about that. They were literally talking about Legend of the Fall and how great Brad Pitt is. The way that I saw it was... Hey, the the way we think about it is that in foreign countries, they get our pop culture later. So maybe, even though it's 2007, maybe in Russia, they're just really big VH1 pop-up video fans. Yeah. And so there's just pop-ups that are appearing throughout the movie. That's what I thought was happening. Yeah. Well, I'm, it makes me wonder... Uh, if there's a Born into Mafia 2, because I'm pretty sure the Russian mob all turns into scanners. Uh, fun fact, Bunny. Uh, yes, uh, Born into Mafia 2 came out in summer of last year. It's currently free on YouTube, and the people at Antflix, like Netflix, but for ants, proudly proclaimed that Born Into Mafia 2 features Jeff the Drunk. Yes, the Jeff the Drunk from the Howard Stern Show. Okay. That, I think that says a lot about this production company, that they are proudly announcing that Jeff the Drunk from the Howard Stern Show is in Born Into Mafia 2. Okay. You know... I think that I, the way that I felt about this movie was that I felt that Vinny Vitaly Versace, if that's his real name, I doubt it, um, definitely explained this movie the same way that Ed Wood did at the Brown Derby. Yeah, that's just what this is, a supernatural, uh, a monster movie with the scariest monster of all. Oh, I don't like monster movies. I like something, I like something more, rom that's, I like something more with heart. Well, that's just what this film is. I'm touching romance. Yeah. And that that's the way that he described this movie, that he described it like five different times to different people. So, so the difficult part about discussing this movie is that there is no information about this movie at fucking all. Yeah. Uh, there's no Wikipedia page. There's no Rotten Tomato page. There's an IMDb page, which I'm one million percent certain was entirely created by Vitaly Versace. Yeah. 
and has very little information about it. So I tried to figure out what I could. This is an Ant Flix movie, A-N-T-F-L-I-X, like Netflix, but you take away the net and you add ants. And it's an Anton Pictures production. As far as I can tell, Ant Flix and possibly Anton Pictures is just one or a couple of Russian Romanian friends that just make extremely low budget movies and releases them. And again, I think it's a scam because well, Amazon well, Prime it's, will it's, literally buy anything. It's a lot it's a lot like I am under Cow Studios and you are the Church of Ed Wood. Yeah. And when we when we are doing something together, then I'm crediting both. Yes. Something like yes. Undead Cow Studios in association with the Church of Edward or something like that. You know, but it's the same thing. Like, Anton Productions, it's it's just George Anton. His friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, I'm pulling up uh, Ant Flix Studios right now. Oh, good news! Deception is back on YouTube. So, so here are some of the movies that they've made. Okay? Okay. Lord of the Magic Ring. Okay. feel like that might be based on something else, but what that something else is, I just can't put my finger on it. No. The Passions of Jesus Christ? Yeah. That is a, a drama and also a documentary. Uh, well, it's, men it's, in... also, it's also very formal using his whole name like that. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I believe all of these are available for free on YouTube. Uh, men in Suits? That one has to do with aliens, if you can believe that. Okay. Wink, wink. And uh, so, they did. So they're asylum without money. Yes, yes. They also released a film about dreams called Deception, and it got pulled from YouTube. But uh, good news, it's back on YouTube, so you can watch Deception. Okay. And this film, Born into Mafia. Uh, the hard, so so I tried to find as much information as I could. There is an antflix.com. It is a hideous fucking mess of a website that makes edward.org look like Google. Yeah. It is a fucking mess and I it you know it's a mess. And Anton Pictures also has a website, georgeanton.com. There's hardly anything on the website, and what is on the website is in another language that I can't understand. <laughs> like, there's very little reviews about this. The movie has a 1.4 on IMDb, and according to Rotten Tomatoes, this film doesn't exist. Okay. So... It's, but I did do the math on this. This film genuinely would be the worst film of all time on the IMDb bottom 100. The thing is, the movies on the IMDb bottom 100 all have been released in theaters, and this movie has not. But the worst movie on the IMDb bottom 100, which we watched during the summer, you should all go see all, listen and see all of those. They're incredible. Um... The worst film on the list, Disaster Movie, has a 2.0 rating. This movie has a 1.4. This movie is the worst film of all time. It just is not seen that way because this is such an unknown film, which is why I wanted to do it for the podcast, because it is a crime, nay, a travesty, that people still say that Plan 9 from Outer Space is the worst film of all time, and Ed Wood is the worst director of all time, when Vinnie Versace and George Anton's <coughs> Born to Mafia exist! Yes. This, this is a very personal 
thing for me. Yeah. But I love this movie. I love this movie so <coughs> much. At times, it seems as if it's ad lib. Yeah. You know, like, there are some things that I feel that, like, you did not... No one could have written this. Like, in the beginning, the, the son goes, I won't do it. And the dad says, yes, you are. It's like, what? Someone did not type that into MS Word. Yeah. You know? Oh, and, and, and uh, they're having that conversation in the car. Because of your business, mom, mom is dead died. Really? Mom is dead died? Yeah. Because of your business, mom is dead died. Okay. No one wrote that on a laptop for this script. No. Bunny, um... Well, but that could also be because he doesn't have all of his lines memorized. Yes. You know. Uh, so not necessarily ad lib. He yeah. just didn't take another take. Yeah. Uh, I'm having one of these horrible beers, honey. Okay. Uh, I'm in the right mind frame to have one of these horrible okay. beers. Um, funny, I'd hate to do this to you. I really, honestly, sincerely hate to do this to you. Um, can you tell us the plot of Vitaly Versace's Born Into Mafia? Kinda. Uh... <laughs> So he uh, he's born in, he's born in Russia, and his father is like the mush, Russian mob boss. Because like, of course, you know, you're never born into the mafia by being the son of Guido the bookie. Yeah. Okay. That never happens. So yeah. it's the boss or nothing. Well, he wants just to, like Nerf. He wants to. He wants to get out of the mafia. He's like twelve. <laughs> yeah. He wants to get out of the mafia. Uh, his father doesn't want to let him, uh, but he's turned all religious, so he runs away to L.A. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. Pretty sure he was in L.A. The entire time. Yes. But just for the sake of argument, escape to L.A. To move in with a guy and his mom who he met on the internet. Yeah, just like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. He falls in love with a girl. Uh... The end? <laughs> and almost completely, she's in love with the world, but sometimes these feelings can be so misleading. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, this is one of the worst movies of all time, and it's one of the worst films that we've done. That being said, um, just FYI, Bunny. We're not doing it now. Okay. Eventually, we are going to have to watch Born into the Mafia 2. Okay. Not now. I mean, it took us a couple of years to watch another El Santo. I'm just saying. True. True. Eventually, we are going to have to go back to the Ant Flicks well. <laughs> but I really do think that more people should watch this. It's so bad that it's like, it, a lot of people say this, and I try not to say this because I feel that it's like a, it's just something people say, but really, this is a car accident. Yeah. And it's so hideous that it's almost hypnotic and you can't not watch it. This is a phenomenal bad movie. And I love it so much. And I, it's shocking to me that more people don't know of the existence of this film and the other films that these people have made. Oh, they made an Aladdin ripoff. Yeah. 
And then back when uh, 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 Robert Downey Jr. was making those films, they made a Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Back back when sparkly vampires were all the rage, they released a film called The Last Vampire on Earth. And that's supposed to be really shitty. Um, But it's one of those things where you know bad movies, but like a lot of people say, oh, I'm a big fan of bad movies. I love bad movies, but they don't know who Neil Breen is. Yes. Yes. This is, this is the next level of Neil Breen. Yes. You know? Because I, I'm sorry, but, like, I'd watch a Neil Breen movie before I watched another Vitaly Versace and Flix movie. Yes. So I really do. I'm happy that we did this film because, like, more people need to see this movie. All of the other movies, they're free on YouTube. Well, Almost at least all of the them are free. The one Neil Green movie that I had seen for the show, at least I, I remember there were spots in Neil Green's movies where you could see he tried. Yeah. He tried to bring a bit of art to the movie. He didn't really succeed, but he tried. This movie lacked that. Yeah. It's just some dudes. And they're literally Neil in Green Jackson. would have gotten you a good restaurant exterior. Yeah. They are literally, they made this film in Jacksonville, Florida, because they show the front of the library in the beginning, and if you pause it and take a look, you can see that even though they're supposed to be in Russia, they're in a Jacksonville, Florida public library. Nice. And I love that. Yeah, Jacksonville. Like, in fucking the good place. Yeah. Uh, Blake Bortles, or whatever the name of that football player is. Jake Bortles? Jake Bortles. Jake Bortles. Oh, you mean the quarter, was it the quarterback? Yeah, the quarterback from the Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars. Yeah. yeah, this movie was filmed in Jacksonville, Florida, but it's supposed to be oh. Russia. Fucking, I love this movie. This is one of those films where it's like, it's midnight, just like in Shang-Chi. Okay, just like in Shang-Chi. This is one of those movies where it's like, oh man, it's midnight. Uh, we should go to bed. Yeah, we gotta wake up early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we really gotta. Yeah, we should we should go home. That's the responsible thing to do. We we should go to bed. That's the adult thing to do. Or and the next thing you know, it's one thirty, and you've had a couple of beers, and you're high, and you're watching Born in the Mafia. Yeah. I and I'd hate. Freaking loved Shang Chi, by the way. It it. it... <coughs> Infinity War was a serious film that set up Endgame, and Endgame was this serious, massive, epic drama. And then after that, they did Black Widow, which was more like a drama, like a family drama, but with a few action sequences. And it's like, oh man, remember when Marvel movies used to be fun? And then Shang-Chi was that. Shang-Chi was like an old school MCU film like 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 Thor three, uh, Captain America Civil War, the first fucking Ant Man, like just fun and kind of dumb and just it was just fun the yeah. way Marvel movies used to be and I fucking love it. Yeah. God, to think that like uh, it's so weird because. And an excellent use of Trevor. And I am in love with Aquafina. I'm sorry, Aquafina. I love her. I love her in the. I love her in that movie. And there should be more movies where there's a guy and there's a girl and they're the best of friends and they're not in love and they're not gonna kiss, but they're the best of fucking friends and that never happens. There's always some fucking romance thrown in there. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I love about this. Like, here's a guy, here's a girl, they're the best of friends, they're not gonna fuck. You know? Yeah. So, such a fun movie. I love that goddamn movie. And then I saw Eternals, and it's like, okay, we're back to the Infinity War uh, endgame sort of shit. 
here's the big epic Marvel movie that everyone must see. And it's like, shit, I just want them to be fun again. Shang-Chi was so much fun. And, and Eternals is just, oh, another epic. Like, I don't give a shit. Just make them fun. Yeah. You know? Fuck. Uh, and I'd hate to do this to you, buddy. But in the last episode of the first season of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, there's a skit where there's a bunch of people planning a baby shower. And everyone's like, oh, we should have tiny bottles of champagne. Oh, maybe we can have disposable cameras and everyone can take pictures. Oh, we need a gift basket. But there's one young guy there, and he's the boyfriend of the girl. And he's trying to unload gangster stuff. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know what would be great to give in the gift basket? Stanzo brand fedora. They're really good. I've got a thousand of them. I can sell them to you cheap. And it's like, oh, no, I don't know about that. How about uh, personalized gift baskets? Oh, how about T-shirts with people's names on it? How about uh, plastic fake Tommy guns? And it turns out he made a mobster movie, and it's and he thought it was going to be a huge hit. So he bought all of this mobster merchandise to sell to people, but it turns out the movie fucking sucked and everyone hated it. So he's just there at the baby shower planning party trying to unload his mobster stuff. <laughs> and so event at the end of the skit it's the baby shower and everyone's there like happy happy baby shower we're so happy and they get their uh, gift baskets and each one comes with a stinky old fedora oh my god this hat smells I know right they're stanzos they're good and everyone has like a fake toupee and a tommy gun and a stinky fedora and I swear to God, that one skit from I Think You Should Leave is this week's fucking movie. <laughs> it's just some dude somewhere who had a great idea for a mafia movie and it fucking sucked. Yeah. That is this movie. This movie is, I swear, the real life version of an I Think You Should Leave skit. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love it so much because I am obsessed with I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. It's uh, available now on Netflix and everyone should watch it. There is a comedian who is in like three skits and I think you should leave. Her name is Patty Harrison. She is in a skit in season one where uh, she works in an office and, and they get a printer, a brand new printer, and someone says, oh, Santa must have come early this year. And so she, everyone laughs. And so she keeps making Santa jokes and no one thinks they're funny, and she keeps getting more and more pissed off. Yeah. And then she appears twice in season two, and I'm like, oh, this woman is amazing. I need to find out more about this woman. So I learned her name. Her name is Patty Harrison. I looked her up on YouTube, and she has this wonderful fucking song that she does as part of her stand-up routine where she seriously says that, like, she went to school for music, and so she wrote a song, and she pitched it to singer Dua Lipa, and she turned it down. And so I'm going to sing it now to you in the audience. And she sings this song about like, I just met you, but I'm in love with you. I would do anything for you. I would kill myself. I know we just met because you just gave me my sandwich at the restaurant, but I would do anything for you. I would kill a dog for you. And it, it, it keeps going crazy. I just learned a, like a week or two ago, she is a trans woman. And I am obsessed with her. Her name is Patty Harrison, and she's amazing. And she's in, like, three skits, and I think you should leave. She's in one of my favorite skits in season two, and it's a uh, Shark Tank parody. Okay. Where uh, everyone, all of the judges are rich except for her, and she says, uh, I made my money because I was accidentally sewn into the pants of the Charlie Brown balloon at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> So I sued the city and I won. <coughs> to this day, I hate bald boys. I despise bald boys. Every time I see a bald boy, I think I'm back in the pants. 
the whole family and I, we, we quote that constantly. And that brings us to next week. What I'm trying to do with the podcast is throw you for a loop. That's what I'm trying to do. Throw you for a loop. Last week, we watched Lamb. That was fucking weird as shit. Yeah. We both watched the same movie and saw two different movies. Yes. And this week, Born into Mafia? What the fuck even was this movie? Next week. I'm like, what's the biggest curveball I can throw at you? Next week, we are watching the entirety of the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. With commercials! With commercials, okay, that's the same. Okay. I found it on YouTube, because it's, the, it's, it's going to be the last episode that we do before Thanksgiving. Yes. We need to get in the festive spirit. There's not a lot of Thanksgiving shit. We either watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, or we watch the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm really excited about this. It's I fucking love the Macy's Thanksgiving It's going to be better than Born into Mafia. Huh? It's going to be better than Born into Mafia. Yeah, yeah. I think the village people are in it. I, it's 1984. Yeah. It's yeah. going to ring a lot of nostalgia bells. Every time I hear Toto's Africa now, I change the lyrics to be about 1984's Dune. Yeah. Like, like, like he's singing it, and so it's like, I'll make it rain down in a Rexist. Like, I, I keep changing the lyrics. Yeah. Oh, there is Sting, and he's not wearing pants. So, uh, next week, we are watching the entirety of the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The entire thing with commercials is available right now for free on YouTube. I am shocked at how many entire Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parades are available for free on YouTube. Uh... And I know this because of a story time I did. It's a whole story, but that's what we're doing next week. The 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay. And then after that, we'll get back to actual movies. But I'm really excited for us to take this detour. Okay. Yeah. That is a curveball. It is a curveball. It's a curveball, yes. though, right? Yeah. So that's what we're doing next week. The 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah! And if you want to see Born Into Mafia, just search Born Into Mafia on YouTube, and it's there. You can watch it. It's insane. You probably won't. Get high. Have a beer. Watch Vitaly Versace's Born Into Mafia. It's shit, but I think it might be better than House of Gucci. So there you go. Uh, I'm trying to think of every movie as House of Gucci, like uh, the Minions 2 movie. All the minions are going like, minions is family. No, minions is bananas. No, I am minions. You are not minions. I am minions. Yeah, that's basically House of Gucci. Have you guys, have you guys already made the No, Dune is spice. No, Dune is not yeah, spice. Dune is desert years. people. No, no, Dune is, Dune is people drinking their own pee. Yeah. Uh, so, so next week we're watching the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, and if you want, be sure and check out Born Into Mafia 2 featuring Jeff the Drunk from the Howard Stern Show. All right. Yeah. So that's next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, uh, Antlers, eh, Dune, eh, uh, Maria Totes Reel and Ruben the Werewolf, that is a love that will not quit. Because of your business, Mom is Dead died. Yes. I gotta say, I think that this has been a pretty, fairly, somewhat good episode of the podcast. <laughs> Keep dropping my mic. It I has think... been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, I, that's how I felt. I felt in my, in my heart, in my prana. Someone says that in... Uh... Yes, I'm gonna eat those. Someone says that in uh, a bucket of blood. 
Your sculpture did something to me, Walter. I felt it deep down in my prana. I have no idea what the fuck that means. And I don't think it means anything. I think I just made that up as like a, uh, as like a beatnik slang for the movie. Yeah. But I've been using that a lot. So I, I felt that this was a damn good episode in my prana, but I didn't want to say that because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction and not me. But anyway, uh, yes, I concur with your, uh, with your assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve sometimes. And on behalf of uh, Natasha, Eleanor, Mal, Gizmo, Max, and everybody else in the house, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Uh, okay, someone is stretching. Slowly walking over here, and oh, I'm dizzy. Um, They're dizzy. Yeah. Oof. Uh, and you uh, do shuffle, and stanzos. Ooh, stanzo brand fedoras. They're good. Yeah, and your daddies. And your daddies. Okay, uh, Jaden, you want to do one? And you. And your crocs. Okay, there you go. Uh, do 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 do